Uh, welcome to this lecture on map projections. Uh, map projections are actually one of the trickier, tougher to deal with things in GIS. Um, they can cause a lot of frustration and fixing problems around map projections, uh, it can be kind of difficult and not so fun. Um, so the point of this short lecture is to give you an idea of why we even bother with map projections, why some are different than others, um, and to touch on some of the more interesting uh, subjects that we see in this topic um, to make up for all the boring stuff later. Uh, the goals of this lecture, for you to learn what they are, why they're necessary for GIS, um, specifically to learn about the four uh, spatial properties that can be preserved or alternatively distorted by various projections. Um, and finally, hopefully, uh, you'll begin to appreciate um, the differences between projections and why one might be preferable over another uh, for a given application. So the basic problem uh, with projections is taking the, the spherical or near spherical surface of the Earth uh, and um, taking those surface features and fitting them onto flat plane for representation, like a paper map or a computer screen in a GIS. Um, the trouble with this can be seen if you ever try to perfectly cover a ball with paper. And there's no way to do that without uh, bending the paper, folding the paper, or cutting the paper. It's, um, and those, that's the same kind of problems that we deal with uh, in projections in GIS. Another way to think about this problem is uh, as an orange peel. If you've ever successfully taken the entire peel off of an orange, or maybe in two parts, um, and then try to flatten it out, uh, it's difficult to do. You have to tear the orange peel, and even still, you have to smush some of the bigger parts. Um, there are ways to tear and smush the surface of the Earth to get it to approximate uh, a flat plane. Um, we see two here. Um, the top is uh, Buckminster Fuller innovation. Um, he liked the idea of not having an up in this map and the ability for uh, users to reconfigure the triangles into any way they want. Um, but these, these are different uh, map projections, ways of taking the spherical surface of the Earth and making a flat plane of it. Now, projection, the whole idea of that uh, that term comes from another way that we can take uh, surface features from the spherical Earth and get them onto a map, flat map surface. Um, think about a source of light, that green flashlight in the middle, um, illuminating uh, features of the Earth's surface. And some of those, maybe land masses, casting dark shadows that can be seen on what's called a developable surface. This is a a metaphor from uh, earlier photography. But what we're talking about there is the map. So we have the, the hypothetical light source, the globe, the sphere, and then the surface, the map surface, onto which the features are projected. And using this method, uh, we can get a variety of different maps that have uh, continuous surfaces, um, at least within the borders of the map. On top, that's a Mercator projection and on the bottom, uh, conic projection. There's actually quite a bit of diversity in how those three elements, the hypothetical light source, the spherical surface of the Earth, and that uh, developable surface, the map, are arranged with one another. So looking at the rows here, we see three types. Um, the top row corresponds to that Mercator projection, very similar to the one used in Google Maps. Um, where the light source would be located at the very center of the Earth in the sphere, illuminating outwards in all directions, um, hitting the surface of the Earth, and then casting its shadow onto a developable surface, a map, arranged as a cylinder around it. And using that, we get a flat surface that has longitude meridians, latitude parallels, uh, arranged at right angles to one another. Um, the middle row is a conic, conical projection, um, where it's similar, but the, instead of having a cylinder surface around that um, 
that globe, we have a cone. And what that will do is it will focus the accurate preservation of spatial features around a meridian that's not the equator, um, which is what we see with Mercator. Now this distortion I've been talking about um, can manifest itself in one of four dimensions, four spatial properties of Earth's surface features. And those are shape, area, distance, and direction. Um, different projections can preserve uh, each one of these to varying degrees, sometimes more than one. Uh, but it's impossible to preserve all of them at once. Um, and it's, it's, for some of them, it's even impossible to preserve uh, for all areas on the map. Um, looking now at the two properties of shape and area, uh, we'll first look at that Mercator map again. Um, projections that preserve shape, they retain that grid structure of parallels and meridians, um, like Mercator, but these lines are not really equally spaced in reality. Um, for instance, at the poles, all the meridians would come together and uh, they could be very, very close. Um, even in the same spot when you get to the pole. Uh, yet here, they're equally spaced apart. So you get huge distortions in area, in size of the land masses. Uh, for instance, Greenland is not truly the same size as South America. Contrast that with a cylindrical equal area map shown to left uh, that preserves the area of each land mass, but it does so uh, by sacrificing the shape. So Canada, Alaska, Norway, Russia are not really that smushed or elongated east to west. Um, but the size of Africa relative to that of South America and North America are, um, is more accurate. And can anybody, think, can anybody think of any applications where preserving the area of the map features might be useful? trying to make a measurement of some sort? Sure, trying to make a measurement of some sort, like uh, describing many different areas uh, with the same variable. You'd want an accurate reading, such as a population density. So I mean, if you're looking at the people per area, you'd want the same area to be used in each observation. Now we'll take a look at distance. And uh, at the end, I'll ask you to think of uh, another application. Um, so some other projections uh, would allow for accurate measures of distance, but not over all of the map, or not from all points in the map. Um, you can accurately measure distance, uh, depending on the projection, along one or two lines of latitude or longitude, uh, such as in Mercator. So along the equator, measurements of distance are accurate. Um, but that's not true for lines anywhere else in that map. In something like the equidistant as a mutual projection, accurate distances can be made in, measured in every direction, uh, but only from a single point. And here it's the zero, zero coordinates. Um, so have you ever seen maybe this equidistant as a mutual projection? Or could you think of some application in which it might be useful? Yeah, Ash. For like least cost path? Yeah, sure. If you're looking at as the crow flies distances um, from a central point, equidistant as a mythical would be a great projection. For that final uh, dimension in which map in which surface features can be distorted, a direction, uh, it's similar to the property of distance in that it's it's not possible to accurately preserve direction. Um, for more than just limited portions of the map, in this case, uh, actually a single point. So the same projection, equidistant as a mutual, also preserves direction. So maybe if you were to chart a course, uh, you, would also, you would use a projection like this and get an accurate least cost pathway out of that. Certain other projections, uh, they don't attempt to maximize the preservation of accuracy in any one of these properties, but rather to balance them out so that no single property 
uh, exhibits real distortion that's uh, problematic. Um, it's hard to preserve features at uh, broader scales. So typically, you see these projections um, for that uh, for maps of, of continents or global maps. Um, this one here is called the Robinson. And finally, we'll look at uh, the effect of these different, uh, dis the effect of distortion of three different, of two different projections and one unprojected, uh, just latitude and longitude. And this is, of course, for the US. We have the light green outline, blue, red. Light green is the unprojected latitude and longitude. Blue would be a Lambert conformal conic. So it's meant to preserve shape, uh, and even for large areas. Um, whereas the red is Mercator, uh, which also preserves shape, but only does so uh, at fine or local scales. Um, so let's see. Are you able to see all three of the colors in the slides? OK. Do you, do you see any uh, similarities or differences between the projections? What's that? Kansas lines up in all of them? Yes, that's true. They're all centered around the same point. And so for there, they'll be the same. And there actually won't be distortion if that's actually, Mercator, it's not based around Kansas. It's just the figure. So there will be distortion. But um, one thing that I see is that for both Mercator and the unprojected data, we have that horizontal line in the northern border of the US, um, which is a locally preserved uh, shape. But in reality, um, the parallel of latitude on which that border is, is based uh, curves. And so that Lambert conformal conic um, would be more accurate at broader scales for the area of the US. So in summary, the projections offer uh, various methods uh, to describe Earth's surface features, not on a globe, but on a flat planar surface. Um, and they vary in their methods in order to preserve accuracy uh, in one or more of these four spatial properties of feature, shape, area, distance, and direction. Uh, there really isn't a right or a wrong projection, um, but different ones fit better or worse uh, for a given application. And that's something to be aware of. Thank you.